So here's a little bit of information what's going on. This video here is going to be about drum tone. It's gonna to be about bearing edges and it's gonna be about Keith's drum. Enjoy. Oh, shit. You boxed up the eye of the tiger drum, didn't you? Yeah. And when you spin it, it's almost hypnotic. Oh, it looks no. like it moves. Like a... no. I can't wait to play it for that in that. Paparazzi and Mike at it Thanks, again. Be fun. So if you come out here, fair warning, you might get on tape. I knew this drum here, I didn't want just to go just to anybody. This was definitely a special drum that had some just sick, sick grain patterns. And um, Keith, he he was explaining to me the look that he liked. It went to a really, it couldn't go to a better guy. Um, Keith is a phenomenal drummer. He can play. Did you see the sound when you drove up? Yes, sir, I did. That's, That's what I'm talking about. It ain't for thieves. Yeah. You like it? Yes. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that this drum was gonna be painted prior. That was the, when we made this drum, it was made to paint. But we got to the end of it and we was like, we can't paint this one, it's too pretty. And we went to go make it. And when I milled that piece of wood and saw the light color, I was like, we can't do that. So we just had to scratch it. <laughs> yeah. We had to go make him another one. <laughs> and we used that one just with a, a clear finish. And it's absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Take care, Keith. All right, thank you. See ya. This is part of the Guitar Center Bandits. We've, uh, we've got the natural, we started spraying. And I wanted to go ahead and uh, get two drilled and a snow gun cut to kind of get an idea on my settings for the uh, inside bearing edge. So, cause all of them are going to be extremely similar. So I wanted to get an idea of what I would be looking like and everything as we start running them. When you want to know how powerful sound is, it's basically a pressure wave and how much energy is put in that particular sound wave. That particular sound wave generates a tone. Some tones are pleasurable to the ear, some is not because you can literally destroy things with sound. It's very, it's solid and it's high pitched. So what we should expect this is to be lower, it's bigger. Nice. Yeah. Getting a lot of tone though. We're not gonna stamp it with a note though, because that's up to you. A drum make a tone. The thickness of the shell. A thicker shell is not going to be as, in my opinion, resonant. Raw shell. The thinner, you're going to get a little more tone, deeper tone. And then it's, uh, you know, how much glue got put on this drum. Or, and a fly drum especially. They're, they're more glue than they are wood. Right. And this is mostly wood. They're all nice. That's truly a graduated kit. The 12 and the 16 are the same thickness, and this is, this is a lot thinner. And not to mention it, it it's going to make the drum resonate more. Yeah. And that's a kick drum. That's a 18 kick. Yeah. Real popular with jazz guys now. But everybody thinks this was it, but back in the day, I mean, 28s and 26s, that's just because of the way it made drums. I mean, I, I don't don't check my numbers and probably do check my numbers, but it was quite a while afterwards that they were able to make 24s and then 22s and then people started making 20s and 18s as kick drums. So... A lot of people say, yeah, the very oldest jazz guys played 18s. No, they didn't. They played 26s and 28s. And it was like the wood block set up. You seen the picture of the old school drum set? Yeah. Like one cymbal. I mean, oh, yeah. before, even before the hi-hat was invented. It was like a three-piece drum set. Yeah, it was like a snare, a kick, and then some wood blocks and different percussion items. Your most standard is a 45-degree angle. Okay. That's just a really... It sounds good. It's try on, on all the drums with a 45 degree angle. Yeah, but now Gretsch, see some drum companies, Gretsch, their edges are extreme, ex exclusively 30. Well, we can do 30s. Yamaha uses 60 on some of their drums. Then you've got, I mean, you can do a 45, but then you can counter on this side with a 45. What's well, really hot right now is a 45 to here to a point and then round over the outside. Or, 
you can take three different woods with the same edge, identical, and they're gonna all sound really close. But if you take the three exactly woods and put three different edges, you're gonna hear. No shit. Yeah. The sharper is, uh, the tone of the drum is gonna have more sustain. Okay. It's usually gonna be more resonant. The rounder you get, the shell becomes more involved in the sound. Mm -hmm. Because more of the drum head is touching the right, wood. Right, right, right. So it really becomes like a resonating so you're actually body. playing the drum head. I mean, yeah. you're playing. And when I say resonance, I just a lot of people confuse it. There's sustain. A 45 is going to give you more sustain. So if I hit a 10 inch time, it's going to go. Doom. Resonance means is how big that sound is. Remember, we are talking about resonant or mm -hmm. open versus a tight focus sound. Yeah, yeah. So let's say I put the. Still gonna have the same resonance. We're gonna get a good broad sound, but we put a round over edge. That tom is probably gonna have a little more low end, and then it's gonna do more like this. Doom. Get out of the way. Not a bad thing. Right. Some people want to take that doom and then get in the studio to control that ring. Whereas with a rounded edge, you already got a little control. Yep. A lot of your older drums, they call it tubby sound. Mm -hmm. Old the old Gretsch and all, they all rounded edges. Modern, I'd say in the 70s is when the edges started getting sharper. Okay. Because drum heads got better. You got to think, you got to put it all together. Back in the 40s, uh, 30s and the 40s, they were making drum shells really freaking good. Uh -huh. But uh, there was no plastic. You know, DuPont, uh, Mylar hadn't been invented yet. So they were using calf skin heads. So there was a lot of inconsistency. And the drums were inconsistent as well because they were way much more handmade like we're doing. I mean, there's a lot of good and bad inconsistency. I mean, because you're doing everything by head. So when the, at the, advent, the invention of the uh, Remo Belly came out with the Mylar plastic drum head, and then Evans came after them uh, probably five years apart. So once they were able to have a more consistent plastic drum head that wasn't affected by temperature, humidity, it changed the whole I mean, those old the drummers, see, they had to tune on the fly because they tuned their drum up and then they you know, 20 degree change of weather, it starts right. raining, that calf skin just droops. And you can tell on bongos. I got some bongos, man. Yeah. If it's raining outside, they're like, do, 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 do. When it's hot, they're, do, ba, ba, bo, ba, without me touching the tension. They tension themselves. So with that, with the more controlled plastic drum head, they were able to cut the bearing edges differently. You know, to make the bearing edges more. The sharper the edge, the less forgiving it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah.